If you've ever thought about live streaming your Nintendo Switch gameplay to social media platforms such as Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, or Kick, you're not the first person to think of this and you definitely won't be the last. That's why in this video, I'm gonna show you how to transform your regular Nintendo Switch gaming setup into a professional streaming setup all while using a MacBook laptop. Now you guys are probably already avid Nintendo Switch gamers, meaning you have your Nintendo Switch console and the way that you game with it already. But when it comes to live streaming with the Nintendo Switch console, you're going to need to have the docking station as well as a monitor or a TV to be able to plug that docking station into. So at a fundamental level, you're gonna need to be gaming with your Nintendo Switch console with the screen inside the docking station. And I'll explain why in just a second. The computer we're gonna be adding to this setup is a MacBook Pro M1 Max laptop. Laptop. It doesn't need to be this exact MacBook Pro. Any of the Silicon Macs, such as the M1 that I have, or if you have an M2 or an M3 or anything later on in the future, you're gonna be absolutely fine streaming off of that computer. If you're watching this video and you're like, well, what about Windows? Well, I would recommend that any computer with a quad core processor, so that could be from AMD or even Intel, as long as it has at least a quad core processor, it'll be sufficient enough to record gameplay and stream but ideally you will want a dedicated piece of hardware in your computer such as a graphics card that will allow you to configure your stream settings to take the load off of your CPU and put it on the graphics card so that way your computer runs even smoother while live streaming and recording all right so in order for our computer to take in the video feed that the Nintendo switch is outputting you need something called a capture card in order to accomplish this I have a couple on hand uh, one is the Elgato HE60X right here and to be honest this one is a bit over overkill for what you're gonna need regarding this setup because the Nintendo Switch can only output up to 1080p 60. So I would say you're much better off going with a cheaper option. This is the Rivalzen 4K capture card. It's only $35 and it's probably one of my favorite cheap capture cards that I've ever used. In order to record audio out of the Nintendo Switch, you're gonna to need to pull it from the analog port at the top. So the perfect device to use is the Elgato Chatlink Pro cable. To set it up, take the side of the cable with the two connectors and take the male input and plug that into the Nintendo Switch console. That's gonna route the audio that's coming through the console into this Chatlink Pro cable. With the female connector, you can plug your headphones into this port. Now the long end of the cable, make sure that you have ground isolation turned on so that will get rid of any electric or static sound. And we're just gonna take our capture card and plug in this cable into the line in or the mic input of the capture card. Next, we need to take the HDMI cable that's going into the monitor and we're gonna plug that into the HDMI in slot of the capture card. So now we have an HDMI connection between the Nintendo Switch and the capture card. And then next you're gonna wanna take a second HDMI cable or whatever HDMI cable that came with your capture card. Plug that into the HDMI out slot of your capture card and then take that HDMI cable and plug it into the back of your monitor. Doing that allows the HDMI video feed that the capture card is reading from the Nintendo Switch to be pushed to the monitor or TV that you're using so that you can see your gameplay while you're playing it. We just now need the USB cable that came with your capture card to be plugged into the device and then the other end of that to be plugged into the computer. I'm gonna use this Moken dongle here because it's been Mr. Reliable for being able to connect anything to my MacBook Pro. And we're gonna make sure that we're using a USB 3.0 connection, not USB 2.0. Capture card's plugged into the dongle. We're gonna plug the dongle into the MacBook Pro. So now when we do that, the monitor should come back on. Before we pull up the gameplay picture on the computer, there's a couple more accessories to show you as a part of this stream build that are not necessarily required, but these are definitely standard pieces of equipment that you're gonna wanna have long-term if you plan on being a content creator or a live streamer. Up first is a webcam. So if you are comfortable showing your face and you want your viewers to see a reaction in real time to what you're playing on game, it definitely adds an extra layer of engagement to your content. This little webcam right here is the Insta 
Insta360 Link webcam. It is pretty steep at $300, but it packs a load of features like being able to record up to 4K 30 FPS and even having a vertical mode since this camera is on a three axis gimbal. And I'm gonna show you guys later in this video how cool that can be, especially with playing Nintendo Switch games. Second here is lighting, and this is so, so important especially if you have a webcam. You can't have a webcam and then no lighting because people won't see you in the dark. This light in particular is the UB size 10 inch ring light. You can get this for around 30 to $35 or so off of Amazon. This is one of my first pieces of lighting equipment and it works pretty well. Stay lit folks. Third item we have here and you were probably guessing it in your mind, that is a microphone. This one right here is the AM8 streaming microphone made by Fifine and it's very, very cool. Lights up in a lot of different colors has a USB-C or XLR connecting option. Very versatile and perfect for gamers, streamers, podcasters, you name it, this thing is solid. I even got a microphone stand to go along with it. Microphone stands, you don't have to have one of those, but they are a nice plus because it will make your audio sound better. So that way, if there's any bumps or knocks into your desk, those don't get transferred into the microphone. Alrighty guys, I have moved over to the MacBook Pro laptop so that we can start configuring our stream with all the equipment that we've set up. But if you guys are enjoying the video, make sure you hit it with a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. We are on our way to 200,000 subscribers. So if you're enjoying the content, come along for the ride. With that out the way, the first thing we're gonna need to do is download our live streaming software. Now there's a few good options out there such as OBS Studio. That's pretty much the industry standard for what most people use. But you also have other applications such as Prism Live Studio and Streamlabs Desktop, which is the one we're gonna be using for this video. Now you might be asking, well, why not just use the industry standard OBS Studio? Well, many of you guys watching this video right now are new to the live streaming space and Streamlabs Desktop is a fantastic introduction to being able to figure out how to set up a stream. It's super easy. All you need to do is download it. There's a link in the description below so you can get to this page to do that. Once you have the application installed, just sign in to the account that you plan on streaming to. And once you do that, you should be brought to a screen where you should see your entire project canvas. And what I'm gonna do first is rename this scene to gameplay done and then where you see the sources section here this is where we can start adding the components that make up each of our scenes that are on the left hand side here so i'm going to go ahead and select that plus button we're going to scroll down a little bit here to general sources and you're going to want to find the video capture device source select that add the source you can name whatever you want we're going to go with capture card add source and then for the device, you're gonna to wanna to select that drop down and choose the capture card that's plugged into the computer. So in my case, it's the USB 3.0 video capture card, which is the Rivals in 4K capture card. And for the preset, we're gonna go with 1920 by 1080 so that it is full with the screen. Once I'm done with that, select done. And the next source I'm gonna add in is this Insta360 Link webcam, which you've been looking at since I've been sitting at this spot. I'm just gonna follow those same steps by clicking on that plus button. And then we're gonna go down to video capture device source, add source. We're gonna add a new source instead. We're gonna name that face cam add source, we're gonna click the drop down, and then this time we're gonna choose the Insta360 Link webcam. There we go, it's popped up. For the preset, we're actually gonna go with 1920 by 1080, select done, and I'm gonna take these corners and shrink it on end so that we have a nice looking face cam. And if I want to, I can actually bring in the sides of the webcam by just selecting the option key, or if you're on a Windows, you can select the alt key, but Doing that will allow you to adjust the sizing. But I think with that, I'm gonna put it to the spot I want and that's looking pretty good. If you have a bunch of images, graphics, or overlays you wanna to add to your scene, you can do that by just selecting the plus button and then you can either add a media file or you can add an image over here in general sources. Now, if you look over to the right hand side, this is where you're gonna see your mixer, which is where all of your audio should be appearing that's coming through into your Streamlabs project. For Mac, things work a little bit funky. Whenever you add a video capture device, it doesn't always add its audio along with it. So what you can do in this case is just simply go to your settings, go to audio, and then you can actually manually select those audio inputs that you want for your stream. I assign these to the mic auxiliary input so you can select the drop down. And then for the microphone that I'm speaking into right now, that's the Fifine microphone, so I can select that there. And then for mic auxiliary two, I can select USB 3.0 audio, which is gonna be that capture card audio coming from the Nintendo Switch. 
select done. And if you look to the right hand side, you'll see that mic audio and that capture card audio coming through into the stream. Now, typically I'm going to want to have that capture card audio to be a little bit less. You don't want the game audio to completely drown out your own voice. And for the mic audio, you want to make sure that that's going into the yellow area and it's doing that pretty well right now. If I wanted to make that a little bit higher, I can manually adjust the gain on the microphone itself or click the settings icon, go to filters. You're going to want to edit filters. And within here, you can add a gain filter, add that on in and you can raise the audio of this source. You can apply the same idea to even the capture card audio. If for some reason, the chat link audio is just too low. I think we're looking good to go at this point. So I think it's time to give this setup a bit of a test to see how well it looks. Starting off with our first game, Super Mario 3D World. Honestly, I never imagined Mario as a little kitty cat. I, I seriously didn't see that coming, Nintendo. <laughs> right on. Wait, go up there, get up. Get up, get up, get up, get up. All right, let's climb up here. Patient, patient. Step on him, good. Oh, this one's big though. How do I handle a big plant? He he's a little too thicky for me to handle. I'm not gonna go down like this, jeez. All right, there we go, that's how we do it. We gotta let him, we gotta bait him in and then we gotta let him. Oh, he's dizzy, he's dizzy, he's dizzy. Okay, that wasn't too bad. All right, I want this power up back though. I like that feature. Oh, we got another one though. I'll hold on to that. Thank you very much. Yes, baby. That's how you go through a course. Have you tried connecting and playing with friends? I don't have friends. On that note, next game. Okay, boys, it is tennis time. Oh, almost threw my joystick. Oh, oh wow. Good play, good play. You know, I think it's crazy that people play this game sitting. Like, wh what are y'all doing? Play it standing. It's a standing game. Even if you are streaming it or recording it, wh whatever. Stand and play it. Don't don't sit. It just looks weird. <laughs> get active. Get moving. It's good. You know, burn burn a little bit of calories. <sighs> Got it. Come on. No L's, baby. No L's. What you got? Pierre, Pierre, what you got? That's game, baby. So that was a little look at what you can expect when putting all of the different streaming products that I showcased in this video together to create an awesome Nintendo Switch live stream. Now, if you guys wanna learn more about best settings for Streamlabs or even OBS Studio, check out the video here and let me know if you guys have any questions whatsoever in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.